Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and uh, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the parent constraint tag. Uh, if you watched my last tutorial, um, you'll know that we set up a really, really simple IK robot arm, and that's what I've got here. Um, so we we had this robot one with this Scrabble one goal. So if I've moved the goal, you'll see that we've got an IK arm. Um, so I just duplicated that robot and it and uh, and its goal. So now I've got Grabber two as well. So that's the only difference really. And I um, I've set up a scene. So in fact, we'll lob a camera in here quick so we can always get back to that. But I've just added a floor which I've put a bend on. So it's kind of like a little studio setup really. And um, yeah, so there we have it. So basically what I want to do is I want to let's hide that camera so it's not in the way B -b 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 camera. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to, the parent constraint tag will actually allow us to animate um, the parent va value for this ball. So I can say, I want this to be a parent at a specific time. And then I want this one to be a, parent so basically we can pass this between objects which is great so what we need to do then is put the parent constraint tag on this ball so I'm gonna select the ball right click go to character tag and go to the constraint so now we've got this constraint tag on there now in the uh, attribute window down here you can see all the different types of constraint we can have and you can see one for parent. So let's click that on and then go across to the tab name parent. And we've got this. So uh, we've got this offset, which we don't need to worry about for this. Um, and then we've got these targets. So we're going to need a few targets. Um, we're definitely going to need these two robot arms, but um, what is going to happen when neither of these are the parent. Well, I should imagine it will be the floor because it's static. So we're going to need three targets. So we've already got one here. So let's add another two. And here we can decide what parameters um, we're going to attach. So at the moment it's position and rotation, which is what we definitely want. And this there's scale here, which we don't need. So we're not going to have to worry about that. So let's pick our targets. Well, first of all, we're going to need the floor. So let's grab the floor and lob that in target one and then for target two I'm just gonna twirl down our robot and pull this out so we can see the name of everything now we're gonna want it to stick to the end here which is this grabber object so uh, if I go back to the parent constraint tag I'm gonna lob grabber one in here and we're going to lob grabber two in here. Okay, so I can fold these back up now. So in the tag, we've got all the targets we're going to want our floor, grabber one, and our grabber two. So if I select the goal for grabber one and then move this, you can see that the ball actually moves. Um, so you go left and right. It's actually moving, moving with it. And that's because if we uh, go to our parent constraint tag, you'll see that we've got weights associated with each target. So it's uh, weighted 100% to the floor and grabber one and grabber two. So it, its weighting is shared between all three of them. So if I was to um, uh, go to uh, grabber one here and bring its weight all the way down to zero and then moved my goal again you can see that it's having no effect on the ball because it's got a zero percent weight um so that weight is like it's uh sort of effect on the ball if you like so you can see that now it doesn't do anything and if i put it up to 50 percent, it would have a blend between the floor and the other grabber by about 50 percent. well by 50 percent. so what we really want is um this ball to be completely attached to the floor to begin with. So um, I'm just going to scoot my timeline back to the beginning. We've only got three seconds on the clock here. So I'm going to up this to 30 seconds. That should do us. Ooh, and just pull that out. Okay, so um, 
what we can do is we want to we want to say this is attached to the floor so at the bottom here you can see update local offset so if i if i twirl this down and say set floor you can see that it pulls the weight for everything else but the floor down to zero percent and if i was to choose grab a one it would put that up to a hundred percent and uh and uh, everything else down to zero so that makes sense so first of all we want the floor okay so there's our floor and we want to keyframe that as well so we can actually press record optimized so if we hit this you'll notice that it adds a red dot to all to all the relevant um things that need to be recorded so you'll notice that it hasn't done it for the uh things that it doesn't need so the scale and all the other stuff but so it's optimized basically that's a simple way to put it so it's recorded that the floor's weight is 100 percent, and that's great so now we can record our robot arm so i'm going to select my grab a one goal and i'm going to hit a keyframe for this and then i'm going to say that it's going to take us what a couple of seconds to get to our to get to our ball so i'm going to choose two seconds here and then i'm going to move this to where our ball is and just so i can line it up properly i'm going to zoom in here and uh, i'm going to change the axis mode of this grabber to world space so there we go and then i'm going to point it down like this and i'm going to get right in there so it look you know we can make sure that we're all lined up beautiful just pull that forward on these two axes and just have a little scoot scoot round. That's a little bit off there. And maybe down a bit more. Yep. Okay, so I think we're getting pretty close now. So we'll go go that way a bit. I think we're close enough. I don't think that uh you know that's too bad at all. Okay, so now our robot arms there. I'm gonna keyframe that. So the arm is gonna go. Right there, okay, so I'm gonna move back to, uh, go to the previous key, so that was at two seconds. So at two seconds, we actually wanna swap the ball's parent over to grab a one. So what I would do is go to the drop down, select grab a one, and then hit record optimized. But there's a way that you can actually do all of that in one one click. So instead of me selecting this and then hitting record optimized, you can just hit the drop down and instead of just hitting uh, grab a one, if I hold control and then click grab a one, it selects grab a one and it sets a key as well. So that's everything done. And now all I need to do is uh, animate my robot arm again. So I'm gonna go forward another two seconds. So four seconds and I'm gonna grab my grab a one goal and as you can see, the ball is now stuck to my grabber one. And I can move that over here like so. And hopefully it will be far enough. And I can keyframe that. So as we can see, my grabber picks up the ball and then goes over to here, over to four seconds. So let's get back to my four seconds by going to previous key. And I think while this is traveling from two to, you know, two seconds to four seconds, my other robot arm can be traveling to meet it. So if I uh, go to previous key, which is two seconds, and then grab my grab a two goal, I can set a key at two seconds. And then I can scoot forward to four seconds, which is where our next key was. And I can have this line up with the with the ball now so let's try and get this in a sort of half decent position to meet our friend over here it might not actually be <laughs> be good enough let's uh let's have a look let's see if we can sort this out we're probably going to get some intersection here i don't think it's far enough to be honest okay so let's uh Let's uh, not worry about for the time being then. So if we go back to our, it was four seconds, wasn't it? So if I choose my grab a one goal again, I can actually 
try a little bit harder. Let's come down and across. So it's a little bit more manageable. And rekey that. So now it does this. Okay, so that's good. So at the four second mark then, I'll grab a gold too. If you, if you uh, remember, we keyframed that at two seconds. So now we're at four. We can move this to meet. There we go, that's a lot more helpful. And again, we're gonna probably get some um, Yeah, we're definitely gonna <laughs> it's definitely gonna collide, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it's about the parent constraint tag. Thank God it's not about my animating ability. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, we're definitely gonna get some crossover there. But that'll do on four seconds. So it's not the most beautiful, but It'll uh, it'll do for our purposes. So at four seconds, then we are going to need to go back to our parent constraint tag and set grab a two. So if I drop down, control and click grab a two, this has now got a new parent. And then uh, I'm going to shift this forward another two seconds. So let's say six seconds. Um, grab my grab a two goal, um, and we're just going to. Move that over here and up. And we're just going to key that. And I'm also going to grab the grab a one goal and uh, put this back to some kind of neutral position. Uh, something like this. And keyframe that. So now we're passing this ball between a few of our objects. Pick it up, comes across, picks picks it up there, and that goes across there. And I'm wondering actually if at um, this frame, so which is six seconds, I can actually say, I wonder if you can actually pick no parent. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Uh, so let's have a look. So at six seconds, update local offset, set floor. No, you can't. But so let's uh, let's control set the floor at six seconds. So again, now now it's a uh, child of the floor at six seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to six seconds. I'm actually going to add a rigid body tag to my floor. Uh, simulation, rigid body. It's definitely on. Is it gonna? Yep, it is. And obviously, when it's a rigid body, it's not gonna be obeying the laws of uh, of any of that stuff. So um, let's go to six seconds again. Six seconds, add the rigid body tag and I'm going to turn the rigid body tag off. So it should still work. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, obviously, I need, I'm going to need the uh, floor to have a collider body on it. So simulation tags, collider body. That's great. Um, and I'm going to go to six seconds. I'm going to go to the bull's rigid body tag. And I'm going to go to one frame before. So where it says enabled, I'm going to actually key it there with enable ticked off just before six seconds. Um, and then go forward one frame to six seconds and turn this on and click enabled. So hopefully now we'll have an animation where our robot arm picks up, it passes it to his friend, that goes over there and drops the ball. Uh, although <laughs> it kind of freaked out a little bit, didn't it? So let's have a look. So. Let's make sure the collision shape for this is definitely a static mesh. Let's make sure that this is automatic's fine. That's good. Uh, let's give it another go then to see what happens. Yep, 
there you go. I think it was the fact, the reason it didn't want to work was because this floor shape um, is bent like this. And if the collision shape of this was set to automatic, what it does is it tried to optimize the collision shape. So it would have been bent up there and then it would have just put a line between this and this. So you need to set it to something like static mesh, just so it actually matches the shape of it exactly. Um, so yeah, just to leave that running again then. Oh, you can see that we've got some weird weirdness going on there. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, now that is very strange. It may be, may be because of this. Um, okay, let's... <laughs> I'm going to back up a couple of times. Right, okay, we're back to, <laughs> back to where we were. Let's save this right there so we can get back there if any other weirdness happens. So let's try this again. The floor needs a collision tab. Uh, it needs a collider body, and that needs to be a static mesh. Perfect. The ball needs a uh, simulation tag, rigid body, and that needs to be off at zero. Let's go to dynamics and off. We'll key that there. And I think it was six seconds, wasn't it? Yeah, and then we go back one frame. And I think I said it was still off there. And then we go forward one frame. And that's when I turn that on. And there we go. Um, so that's definitely a static mesh. That's definitely a automatic shape. And it's on there and off there. Okay, let's go back to the beginning then. I don't want to spend too much time on this because we've got the parent tag working and that drops great go back to the beginning ah so we do have a little bit of an issue i wonder what that could be i suppose it's its initial state maybe i'll look into that and um i'll let you know i don't want to spend too much time on this tutorial but yeah so we've got the uh, parent constraint tag working um, there's probably a few of you screaming at the uh, screen going, I know what it is, you wanker. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'll have that figured. Anyway, so that's the um, parent constraint tag, and that's how you can uh, pass objects between other objects. Um, that's it, <laughs> pretty much. Don't forget to check out digitalmeet.uk. Um, it's there that you'll be able to vote in the poll for the next tutorial. So now that uh, I've done the parent constraint tag, I'll delete that from the list of uh, options you can choose from from and uh, put another one in its place so go to the digitalmeet.uk website go to the tutorials page and it's there you'll be able to vote uh, you do need to be a member which is free to sign up um, but you can vote for the next tutorial there I'm toying with the idea of doing some real flow tutorials or um, turbulence tutorials but um i'm going to leave it in your hands you can you can let me know okay cheers cheers for listening guys bye